there and welcome back to the Chemistry Academy. Today we are going to be talking about fats and oils. So in terms of what fats and oils are used for in the human body, sometimes you can be asked to give a reason for obtaining them through your diet. And the main reason that we really need them on a daily basis is to transport fat soluble vitamins around the body. So your vitamins A, D, E and K they are all fat soluble vitamins, so fats and oils that we eat will allow those to be uh, carried through our bloodstream. We also use fat for insulation and to keep us warm, etc. But transporting fat soluble vitamins is probably the easiest um, answer to remember to that question. So, in general, fats come from animal sources. So, if the, like butter comes from cow's milk or sheep's milk or goat's milk, um, and then in general oils come from plant sources so for example coconut oil, olive oil, um, sesame oil, they've all come from plants. When we look at fats and oils they all have the same basic makeup so they're all made from one glycerol unit and three fatty acids joined together. They join together in a condensation reaction and then if you're breaking down the fat and oil it's a hydrolysis reaction. So that's essentially what our body does if they break down fats and oils in the digestive process, it's carrying out hydrolysis. Glycerol is this molecule here, which you will need to know the systematic name of. So that's propan 1, 2, 3 triol. So it's got the three carbons and the three hydroxyl groups on carbons 1, 2 and 3. So that's where the propan 1, 2, 3 triol comes from. So it is an alcohol and it's got extremely strong hydrogen bonding between its molecules because it has three hydroxyl groups. These are your fatty acids here, so they have carboxyl groups on the end, and then these zigzag lines are just hydrocarbon chains, and sometimes they can be unsaturated and contain double bonds, sometimes they're saturated and just have all single carbon to carbon bonds. Depending on what the fatty acids are will depend, determine then what the melting point of your fat or oil will be, how saturated it is, etc. So that's the basic makeup of a fat and oil. It's made up of one glycerol unit and three fatty acids. The glycerol systematic name is propan 1, 2, 3 triol, and the fatty acids have carboxyl groups with long hydrocarbon chains. Fats and oils are esters, so when these molecules all join together in the condensation reaction, they'll make a fat or an oil, and they are essentially esters, they'll end up with ester links. The specific name given to fat and oil esters is triglycerides, so that's what they can also be called as a family, fats and oils can be called triglycerides as well. So we'll have a look at what this molecule looks like once it's actually all joined together just now. So just like when it's a condensation for making small esters that we looked at before in a previous video, when we're reacting the glycerol with the fatty acids, it's the exact same process. So each molecule gets left with one oxygen and molecules of water are lost. So the molecules join together. Each hydroxyl group in the glycerol reacts with one carboxyl group in a fatty acid. And then so we end up with three molecules of water, three molecules of H2O. And then these oxygens all join up with these carbons. So I'll draw what that looks like just now. So I've drawn the fat molecule that could be produced, just removed the molecules of water and joined that oxygen up to this carbon. And this would be our fat or oil molecule or triglyceride that we make. So you can see the glycerol backbone here three ester links that have formed, and then the fatty acid hydrocarbon chains. Now, like I said before, these can be saturated where there's no, um, no double carbon to carbon bonds, or they can be unsaturated where you have some double carbon to carbon bonds. So what we're gonna look at now is how the nature of the hydrocarbon chains on the fatty acids will determine the melting and boiling point of the triglyceride molecule. So here I've got some a fat, a group of fat molecules and a group of oil molecules and they're drawn as forks. So this is like the low level detail way of drawing fats and oils. So you've got your glycerol backbone in the middle and then the fatty acid chains um, sticking on the outside. So 
When it comes to fats, they are more saturated, which means they have less double carbon to carbon bonds. Oils are more unsaturated, which means they have more double carbon to carbon bonds. When you're talking about whether they're saturated or unsaturated, you need to make sure you use the word more because you can't say for sure a fat's fully saturated. It could be slightly unsaturated, but if you say it's more saturated than an oil, then that's always going to be the case. So fats are more saturated, oils are more unsaturated. When a hydrocarbon chain is saturated, it actually ends up being straight. Um, so we, I know we draw them as zigzags, but if you were to take a wider view, it would actually look straight. So more saturated the hydrocarbon chain is, the straighter it is. This means that the molecules can then pack nice and neatly, which means that they'll have stronger London dispersion forces. So because these are hydrocarbon chains, they'll only manage to form LDFs between them. But if they're nice and neatly packed together, you'll get lots of London dispersion forces happening. Okay. Which will then therefore create a higher melting point. So if your LDFs are stronger, your melting point will be higher. When it comes to the oils, because they're more unsaturated, the double carbon to carbon bonds actually make the chain kinked so you get this disordered version instead so because the chains are kinked the molecules can't pack neatly and therefore they'll have weaker London dispersion forces so you have a lower melting point so by drawing where you might get some LDFs in this picture you might get a couple here maybe some there but the rest of the molecules are a bit far apart so as you can see, there's much stronger London dispersion forces in the fats than in the oils. So this is the sort of process you want to go through when you're explaining the difference in melting point between fats and oils. So you just pick one side or the other. You don't ever need to give both sides of the story. So you would either say that fats are more saturated, therefore their hydrocarbon chains are straight, which means the molecules can pack neatly. This results in stronger London dispersion forces and gives a higher melting point. If you're wanting to do it from the oils perspective, the oils are more unsaturated. So that means their chains are kinked. Therefore, the molecules cannot pack neatly, which results in weaker London dispersion forces and therefore a lower melting point. So just remember one of the two sides of this story and you'll be able to explain the difference in the melting points of fats and oils, if you're asked. So just to finish off a couple other things that you need to be aware of when discussing fats and oils in terms of the higher chemistry course. So we've got this reaction here, it's called hydrogenation or hardening. So this is where you react a fat or an oil with hydrogen in an addition reaction in order to make it more saturated. So when you react the fat or oil with hydrogen, you'll break some double carbon to carbon bonds, which will make it more saturated. That then means that the hydrocarbon chains are going to end up being straighter, which means the molecules can pack more neatly, so they'll have stronger London dispersion forces, which then increases the melting point or gives you a higher melting point. So this is the reaction they use when they're making olive spreads like um, Olivio or I can't believe it's not butter. So any vegetable spreads, they are made by taking the oil, vegetable oil, and putting it through the process of hardening or a hydrogenation addition reaction. Okay. For every double bond you need to break, you need one mole of hydrogen. You could also be asked to determine how unsaturated a fatty acid is, or even just the fatty acid chain, and when if it's in a fat or an oil oil molecule. So the general formula to bear in mind is the CnH2n plus one. So if the fatty acid is fully saturated, then it will fit CnH2n plus one. So this fatty acid here, and it's just this section of the fatty acid, you ignore the carboxyl part of it. So this fatty acid here is fully saturated because two times 25 is 50 plus one is 51. So that fits that fully saturated general formula. For every two hydrogens you have less than the fully saturated general formula, that's one double carbon to carbon bond. So for this one here, if we take that times it by two, 
that's 50 plus 1 is 51 so to be fully saturated it should be 51 but it is only 47 so that's four hydrogens in the left so that means there's two double bonds in there okay so there's four hydrogens less than fully saturated so that's two C to C bonds in that fatty acid okay so that's the NH2M plus one is the, the formula you need to remember for that and then lastly fats and oils if they're exposed to oxygen will undergo oxidation and that turns them rancid so if a fat or oil is turned rancid it's got a foul taste and smell this is not a reaction you want to be happening so by keeping your fat or oil in the fridge that can slow that process down we're just making sure it's sealed and not exposed to oxygen but if you expose a fat or an oil to oxygen it will be oxidized and turn rancid that's all the need to knows on fats and oils if you're looking to find out how fats and oils are used to make soaps, then you can check out my soaps, detergents and emulsions video for that. But if you like this video, please give me a like and don't forget to subscribe. It really helps get the Chemistry Academy out there and help more people achieve their full potential in chemistry. Thanks guys.